Preparing world food security in light of the impact of climate change will be one of the biggest challenges facing humanity in the 21st century. More than 1 billion people in the world today suffer from hunger. In Eastern Africa, a severe and prolonged drought, mostly attributed to environmental change and conflict, has exacted a heavy toll on over 23 million people in the region over the past year. Kenya has been among the worst affected countries, with some 3.8 million people categorized as highly to extremely food insecure in late 2009. Fortunately, the 2009-2010 short trains were above average, resulting in improved household food security prospects for some drought-affected farmers, but much uncertainty remains about the future. <laughs> In an era of unprecedented change, the STEP Center, a global research and policy engagement center supported by the UK Economic and Social Research Council, ESRC, is undertaking studies in different parts of the world linking environmental sustainability and technology with a focus on poverty reduction and social justice. In Kenya, STEP's research center partners from the African Center for Technology Studies Acts the Center for African Bio-Entrepreneurship Kabe, Tegemeo Institute at Egerton University, in association with the Institute of Development Studies, IDS, and Science and Technology Policy Research, SPRU, at Sussex University, UK, have been collaborating on a study to examine environmental change in maize innovation pathways. This has involved analyzing the potential and constraints of alternative pathways in and out of maize, the country's key staple cereal crop. The research starts from the premise that concerns about the effects of climate change present an opportunity to open up the debate about alternative innovation pathways, both within maize-based agriculture and out of maize, to other crops or livelihood options. We use maize as a window to explore the various responses to uh, climate change, market uncertainties, and land use change over time. The issue at uh, uh, the issue of discussion here was how different actors respond to climate change and how they frame um, their responses to climate change, um, which may actually direct resources um, and efforts to particular pathways and, and not others. Between 2008 to 2010, the STEPS Kenya Partners conducted research in a number of field sites, including Sakai, a semi-arid area in Boni East District, Eastern Province, where considerable effort has gone into fostering local adaptation responses to climate change with the support of various agencies, including the Arid Lands Resource Management Project 2, a community-based drought management project of the Government of Kenya. The focus particularly on Sakai um, is mainly because of the experience uh, they have had in terms of uh, climate change uh, issues. And uh, um, the main focus here was that um, the community uh, has been sensitized about uh, climate change, as I said earlier, but also the fact that the area is also prone to periodic uh, droughts um, and increasingly the intensity and the frequency of droughts in these areas uh, have, have emerged. Despite persistent drought episodes and repeated maize failures over many years, many Sakai farmers have continued to grow maize while others have sought to move beyond maize by diversifying into other staple and cash crops.
Being faced with balancing different types of risk and uncertainty in their daily lives, many Sakai farmers are actively seeking new pathways in and out of maize by selectively combining different elements of formal and informal agricultural innovation systems in ways that enable them to tap into multiple sources of socio-technical diversity as the basis for building resilient and robust livelihoods. <laughs> ni kupanda tu na kuna mbua ya kutosha. Mm. Huwa ndio. Tap. Lakini mchanga ni, ni safi kabisa kwa maindi. Mm. Mbua mm. ikenyeja vizuri, maindi na meza wali na inengeza vizuri. Lakini, tabu ni mbua kwa sababu tunawaza kaa miaka metatu, miaka mm. mine, nila mbua ya kutosha ya maindi. Community here, um, their activities are dictated by uh, the climate, uh, or by the agroecological zone, and uh, Sakai lies in uh, agro-pastoral zone too, where they do farming, uh, growing crops, and uh, keeping the livestock animals. We have identified a group that can be a learning group uh, for the rest of the community, and this group is called the Sakai Seed Banking Group, or Sakai uh, adaptation to climate change. Uh, this was used to as a learning uh, uh, group so that the others can see and learn and copy what can really fit in Sakai and all Mr. There are farmers who have uh, uh, opted to remain in Maine. And the intervention of the Minister of Agriculture in collaboration with our plants is that uh, we train the farmers on the right seeds that they are supposed to plant. And in Sakai, the seeds that do well are uh, the, the Katumani seeds. Those are the seeds that take three to four months because the rains uh, take one to two months and they are over. The second group is that is opt opting now to uh, move out of maize. Not fully moving out of maize, but uh, planting less maize and more of other enterprises. And at one point the ministry is uh, really um, training them on uh, what we call uh, diversification, and agribusiness, uh, we call it kilomo, kilomo biashara. That is, the enterprise they choose should be more paying than the one they are living in. The program performed well in 2006-2007 due to good rains received during the period. The period between 2007 and 2009 was perhaps the worst in the history of independent Kenya. After the infamous post-election violence that nearly brought the country to its knees, Kenya faced one of the fiercest drought leading to thousands of losses in human life and both domestic and wild animals due to starvation. Small-scale farmers in Sakai were not spared either. Vitilisa Mutua is one such farmer. Vitilisa has been greatly affected in many ways. Although she continues to grow maize and other traditional crops, she has drawn many lessons from the irregular rain patterns in the region. I was green crumbs, I was beans, I was growing kunde and cow peas, I was growing pigeon peas, Okay. Pigeon 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 
mm. na nikapanda yule nikipanda katumani katumani ile inaitwa DL mm. DLC DL. Jacinta is another small scale farmer in Sakai. She grows traditional maize varieties and other alternative staple crops. Hii mambo ya shambani ni nzuri ikiwa mkua inaonyesha. Mhm. Matatizo ile ninapata ni mkua ikikosa. Mhm. Na msimu huu hakuwa kuwa na mbengu kwa sababu kulikuwa na kulikaa sana bila kuonyesha. Mhm. Kwa hivyo mbengu itaisha tukakula zote itaisha. Mea anachukua sehemu kubwa ni maingi. Ni kama anachukua 7% hiyo Others opted to grow less maize and diversify into fruit production. Ukitaka Tommy sasa na let. Pius Chengo is a retired educationist who used to practice exclusive maize production but due to persistent crop failure he moved to fruit farming especially mangoes which are doing very well. Rain is a problem now. But the people are still growing maize, maize, maize. And uh, it is not yielding. For three, four years they don't get uh, yield. They get very little. So I decided to look for an alternative. And the alternative I saw was maize. I'm sorry, it was, man- was mango. This is, this is the exotic mangoes, mm-hmm. not the traditional mangoes. Uh, we have uh, very many types. We have apple, we have pomegranates, we have kent, we have kate. kate. We have so many, there are so many types. So uh, I found this tree comfortable here with the, 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 the conditions of weather, and uh, it produces very nice food in Mokweni. Makweni should be the, one of the areas where mango does very well. Mm-hmm. It is very good mango. So I decided to to organize the farmers to uh, to, to, to produce, to get volume of mangoes, to increase volume of mangoes. Uh, number two, to organize their training so that they can get quality mangoes. Unlike maize, mangoes are drought resistant. They are cash crops and they are also eaten in the area. While mangoes are easy to grow, they face problems of marketing due to their bulkiness and perishable nature. That those who are mangoes were being exploited by brokers. Buying mangoes very cheaply, They're taking them either abroad or in the, in the, in the Kenyan market and they sell them uh, a lot of money. So it was exploitation for farmers. And I decided to organize them so that we can develop those three things together. Mm. Uh, we are formed what we are what we call umbrellas, umbrella groups at divisional level. Mm. And uh, this the, the committee of the umbrella levels, the members now come together at uh, district level, which is uh, formerly Makwene, but now we have about eight more new districts. Chengo helped set up the Makweni Horticultural Producers Association, NAPA, to bring together mango farmers in the greater Makweni district in order to address the marketing challenges in lobby government and other development partners to assist them with the issue of value addition and marketing. After mangoes, we wanted to get into to other areas like the passion, uh, purpose, oranges, we have so many in the area. <laughs> Thomas Ngula is another retired primary school teacher who established his mango orchard upon retiring. He however still grows maize along other traditional crops on his small farm. Mr. Ngula partially shifted to mango production because of maize failure due to persistent drought. Mm-hmm. 
yusi wa kukusa hii meme <coughs> kutuonyesha nafasi uh, kutoka mimea kwenda mimea ingine kutoka mustari kwenda mustari ingine kwa hivyo tukafuata hiyo na tukawana inafanya vizuri Unlike Pius Chengo who moved out of maize production completely, Mr. Angula has only reduced the area under maize and moved it to mango production. His argument is that he grows maize for food and mangoes for sale. Kama kukiwa na kavu kama uliopita, pengine, maembe atasaidia. Matungo atasaidia, lakini ni meingine, pengine kikosa hiyo atasaidia. Moreover, as an individual farmer, he finds mango production facing many marketing challenges. He plans to join MAPA, but he posts that the association is still new and weak. The culture of Mamba in Missouri is for who are the Kali Kidogo, Kwangarama. Mamba na taka ndawa, na taka wafani kasi. Almanu wak Kwa hivyo hiyo ni mkali kidogo Although Mr. Pius Chengo moved out of maize a long time ago this year 2009-2010 he purchased improved maize varieties and associated fertilizers with the sole purpose of producing food for his workers He was motivated to do so because of the expected good rain The maize crop performed very well Mr. Chengo also purchased the same seed Duma for his brother and help prepare his brother's land at the same time as his. However, his brother did not plant on time and did not apply fertilizer. He also did not observe good agronomic practices and as a result his maize crop performed poorly. Here is soya beans. We meet another farmer, Francis Kimeo, who opted to return to farming after several years of formal employment. Kimeo was involved in the climate change group from its outset and became the chairman of the seed bulking group. The group was supported by the Ministry of Agriculture Extension staff and researchers from Kenya Agricultural Research Institute Kari in terms of seeds, fertilizers and technical training. The first successful year where we were able to get wood yield, we are able to we are, we are able to to select now and we, that's when we, we did a bit of backing. We had a small cereal bag whereby what we got we were able to, to give to other farmers. So we assisted other, other, other people to do so. But and luckily the, now the, the following year it was not good. So we never banked any, any seeds. Well, the, season was not good. the following season we never also never bagged because it was now it was not a good a, a, a good season. But the worst, the worst has been the last season, 2008-2009. Before the rains, which before the rains, the war that was been the worst because we have not been able to get anything. Apart from seed bulking, farmers have also diversified into vegetable production by collectively building sand dams. These sand dams, we are encouraging groups because every village has got a sand dam. So that they, can, they can also change now, start now fruit growing so that they can, they can, they can also start other activities apart from from farming alone. Through the mediation of the MOA and Curry, some members of the seed bulking group have started growing sorghum for East African breweries. According to Mr. Kimeo, this initiative will be very good for farmers in Assal because sorghum will become a cash crop. I wanted to, to, to diversify from maize because now we have been, people have been relying on maize. So this time now, Kenya breweries came with the idea that they wanted to contract so that you can plant this type of sorghum called gadam so that they can be able to use it for preparation of the beer instead of barley. So that gave us a morale. So we wanted to, wanted to, to show, to prove to, to, other, to, 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 to my people that 
sorghum is good so that now if now they find it now good so that they can be able to, to plant however drought associated with climate change and climate variability is still a threat and more is needed to protect the country and its people from the effects of climate change sakai being uh, the project area for the three years now um, this is the fourth year uh, we have had some spillover and I would say for every one farmer we have around six farmers who have land and have copied what they ate and they do. So that spillover in the sublocation I'm sure it will also spill to the other uh, locations. The group membership increased to 80 before reducing to the current 65 active members. If a group goes beyond 35 or 40, you expect challenges. There are some people now, you find now there, there have to be some divisions. So the, the similar divisions you still have some elements who feel that, that they are not, they are not, they are, they are, they are not satisfied. And that, that's very common with the groups. With the groups. These farmers received training on the use of improved seed, fertilizer, both chemical and manure, compost, improved methods of controlling pests and diseases. They were also trained on better methods of land preparation and planting seed, all aimed at helping them diversify from oxen plow, which had not been effective. However, only 50% of the farmers adopted modern ways of farming. Farmers have changed from the traditional way of farming now to the agricultural way or they have adopted the late technologies of farming. So the, the current position of farmers is now different as compared to the, the 2006. Other farmers, and apart from the, that group of eight, have also adopted the system. And especially when we started, farmers were very reluctant to to sourcing for good seeds, use of manure, use of fertilizer. But now, since the intervention of the project, farmers have changed within the group and also outside the group. Farmers have gone to source for good seeds, which definitely have sure of high yield. Field. Yeah. Nonetheless, Many farmers from the Greater Makweni district who attended demonstration plots and field days had learned some of these modern methods of farming. Self-reliance a few years ago was not a choice as unreliable rainfall made it very difficult to provide a meal every day. Instead of looking at maize as a single system, we'd rather look at maize in a system. And in that way, we're going to be able to look at the multiple systems that maize can farm, but also uh, when you're thinking outside maize, other crops and other livelihoods that could be associated with agriculture or farming and as maize is concerned. And um, in, 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 in so we advocate the whole issue that we think in a much broader sense of agroecological and socio-economic conditions. Today though, huge steps have been made and many lessons learned by farmers Many people in arid and semi-arid regions across the country will rely on traditional maize-based agriculture despite unreliable rainfall patterns. Millions of people in Kenya still wait to be exposed to successful means of agriculture to counter food insecurity.